speak to you for a few minutes on redeeming time. We are about to lose a year. It's finished. It's gone. And I want to leave a few thoughts with you to go forward. I want to focus on the 10 keys to maximizing and redeeming time. Please write this statement down. It may be a good place to start. And that is the only thing that we are given that is common to everyone is time. All of us are different heights, different weights, different colors, pigmentation, different economic strata, different ethnic backgrounds. We are from different cultures. But one thing we all have in common, that's time. Why is that so important? Because what you are and what you become depends on how you use your time. The billionaire and the beggar both have 24 hours every day. We measure life in terms of time. The old and the young, the black and the white are all given the same amount of time every day. Time cannot be stopped. You cannot stop a day. You cannot stop an hour. They have no respect for you. But you can control how it will be used. Inspiring habits. Which means that even though time is unstoppable, it is controllable and what you do with it determines who you become can you honestly say to yourself that you used time effectively one of the things that we know about life is that it is always changing sometimes you're up sometimes you're down sometimes you're happy and sometimes you're sad now that's that thing called life and when we begin to understand and know that, accepting that reality that we will never ever have things just on an even kill all the time, that you're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. That's where the work is. Anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships, the children are acting normal, business is successful. Anybody could be positive then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. See, but the real challenge, the real challenge of growth mentally, emotionally, and spiritually comes when you get knocked down. Adversity introduces a man to himself or a woman. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. I think about time a lot because time is life. And every time a year passes, you are basically measuring time. A year is the passing of time in our cultures. A new year is an opportunity to refine your purpose. Secondly, a new year is an opportunity to redefine your life's vision, to see if you are still on course or if you need to adjust. Thirdly, a new year is an opportunity to reestablish worthwhile goals. And I use the term worthwhile because some of our goals may not be worth pursuing anymore. And fourthly, a new year is an opportunity for you to bury the past and move into a new future. In other words, time is a blessing or a curse depending on how you manage it. Time is life. What have you become is totally dependent on how you use time. I was going through a major challenge in my life that was wearing me out, that was using me. And one of my students told me in a class that I was teaching, Lessons in Truth, she said, Les, until you handle it with grace, it will stay in your face. And it stayed there a long time. Are you going through it or are you growing through it? Because it's not going to leave you until you grow through it. Are you learning anything or are you doing it over and over and over again? Insanity is doing the same thing in the same way, expecting a different outcome. I thank God for time. Time is a relief. Time is good news. Look at Genesis 1.14. It tells you when God created time. It says, and God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark what? Seasons and days and years what's the purpose for time first of all time was given to us 
to take us out of eternity. Secondly, time was given us to protect us from forever. If you had a pain in your back in eternity, it would be an eternal pain. Thank God for time. Time has a beginning and an end. Time was given to us to measure the purpose of our life, why we live. I thank God for time. But time has some limitations. God says, look, when I gave you birth, I hired you to do something and I got a certain period for you to do it in and you can't exceed that. Time is determined. I like this one, Psalm 90 verse 12, read. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. In other words, let me know how long and how much I have to do so I can use my days effectively. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 6. For there is a proper time and a procedure for every matter under heaven. In other words, there's a proper way and time to do everything. Whatever you've been through, you can now say it was last year. Tell your neighbor, I was broke last year. The next thing that is important is that expect things to get better for you. Because they are. See, life is cyclic. You're not, what is, whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay. It has come to pass. to pass. Not to stay, just to pass. It's just going through. The biggest challenge is, is to know what's happening. This is a part of this thing we call life. This too shall pass. And maintaining perspective, putting it in perspective. How do we get stuck? A friend of mine working on a job, Loved the company very much, expected to retire there. And one day they call him in the office, ask him for his badge and identification, told him he was fired and he had to leave then. He was devastated. And if you came anywhere near him, he will tell you his story. As we all have stories. Even when he got a job, he went on the job telling anybody who would listen how they fired him unjustly. And he always ended with, it wasn't fair. Life isn't fair. It's not fair that birds eat worms, and they do. In other words, whatever happened in the past separates you from the future. That's how good time is. I used to be sick. That was yesterday. Health is on the way. Time separates your past from your present and your future because time protects us from living in a permanent condition. You won't be a divorcee all your life. Time will prove that. You won't hurt with grief all your life. You won't be sitting around because that man didn't marry you. Where there's a will, there's a way. There's another man on the way with a fantastic life, with plenty more money than the one you was trying to get. Time will sort this out. You know, when you go into a service station to get gas, you don't go in there and just start pumping. When you push the lever up, it clears the previous bill. By the same token, if you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. All of us have experienced some tragedy, and if we haven't, we will. Sometimes your life will be in a slump, and you can either let it destroy your life, or you can build upon it. I'm not going to let this destroy You can permit it to let it hold you down, or you can decide, I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm bigger than this. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how talented you are, I don't care how much you work on yourself, there are some times when things aren't going to go right. There are times when anything that can happen will happen. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy. Work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself in the situation. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and pray and meditate and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head, and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. Nothing is permanent in time. Make a note of this one, please, and this is very important. Time is the only commodity on earth given equally to every human being. We don't possess the same amount of money. We possess the same amount of time. So the key to life is what you become in life is determined how you use the time you have and that's why we use terms like spending time. Time is a currency. Every human has the same amount every day and time like currency must be spent. Time is used to buy life. So whatever you are, you spend your time buying it. Even if you're broke, you use your time to become broke. You see, time 
determines everything. If your marriage is under stress, it's because you haven't used your time in your marriage properly. Time is so powerful that whatever you invest your time in, you become. You got one new year about to start. My question is, what you gonna do with the next 12 months? What are you gonna look like? What are you gonna have or not have? There are some people in your life you need to drop. In other words, time gives you time to change relationships. I put it to you, friends, that you can actually treat time just like money. Write this down. You can have time stolen. How many of you sat with people for two hours? When you was finished, you wasn't sure what happened. I mean, two hours of your life gone, and they talked to you, and you gained nothing. The older I get, the less time I have to just listen to talk. I don't know about you, but you ain't old enough yet. There's a certain period in your life where you realize, I ain't got time for this. People just kind of wonder in your life, let's talk. Talk about what? Next thing is that you've got to activate the thinker in you. Don't, stop. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. Your mind goes on automatic. You know, weeds don't have to have any encouragement to grow. You don't have to water them. They don't have to get sunshine. They don't have to have fertile ground. They will grow through the cracks of a sidewalk. But if you want to grow orchids or roses or any kind of exotic flowers, there are special processes and procedures you must go through. Well, by the same token, you don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody, to beat yourself up over the head, to feel loaded with guilt. You don't have to make any effort to do that. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. It's not going to be easy. You've got to make those kind of declarations to yourself. I'm unstoppable. This will not get me down. The challenges of life. Write this down. Time can be what? Abused. Time can also be lost. You can lose it. Just like money. Time can be squandered just like money. You can spend an entire day. Have you ever said this? I don't know where the day gone. Why? You squandered it. It didn't take you closer to your goals, didn't take you closer to your vision, didn't accomplish the things you wanted, and you spent it and squandered it on stuff that didn't count. Time is more important than money. That's why the businessman say time is money. Can I put it another way? Write this down. Time can be depreciated just like money. Time can also be devalued. Every hour is important. My question is, what are you spending it on? You can reduce the value of your life by who you spend your time with, where you spend your time all day, you can devalue your time. Can I suggest this, that time can also be revalued. You can actually increase the value of your time by choosing what you do with it. I learned years ago, if you broke and I broke, you was bad company. You complain, I complain, and we just one big complaining party. Somebody gotta get out of here. You ain't going nowhere, I ain't going nowhere, we end up nowhere, I'm out of here. You can revalue your time by just adjusting your relationships. The books you read. I mean, I've seen people read them love novel books. A love novel book don't take you to your goals. You know, Sam kissed Susan and they went for a cruise along the river. Listen, man, you broke. You need another book. You got to revalue your time. Change your library. Go dump some books when you go home tonight. Not a one of my books is a waste of time because I use my time to produce those books and they're valuable because I use my time to give my time value. People spend all kind of money on magazines and you still got problems. Time. You can become a victim of time. Write this down, please. You can never stop time. Time doesn't adjust for you or nothing. You can never buy time. You can't buy it. You can never slow time down. You can never speed up time. Until dead, you are stuck in time. You are victims. And therefore, all you have to do to make time your friend is to manage it. Psalm 90 verse 10. 
the length of our days is 70 years. Then what? Or 80. If we have the strength, yet those span is but trouble and sorrow. For they quickly pass and we fly away. The average age of a human, God says, will be between 70 and 80. My father's here tonight. Boy, I tell you, I'm so jealous of my daddy. He's 89 years old. He ready to run a marathon. He says, you have about 70 years, good years, he says. What are you going to do with them? So when you begin to look at your past, give an interpretation that empowers you. That's where I used to be. That's not where I am now. I'm growing. What do you do with time? Write this down. First of all, you can manage it. Secondly, you can use it. Thirdly, you can invest it. Fourthly, you can convert it. In other words, you can use time to develop and build and construct things. You can turn your life into value by the way you use your time. You can use time to fulfill your divine purpose. Time itself is given to you as a gift from God. And so Ephesians 5 says, wherefore, stay awake. That's what the verse says. What? Wake up. Why? Because you can live your whole life sleeping. Awake thou who sleepest and arise from the dead. Even Christ himself wants to shine upon you. Verse 15. Look therefore carefully at how you walk, not as unwise, but as what? Wise. And then he says what? Redeem the time because the days are full of evil. I was doing this with my life for the last 40 years, maximizing every minute of my life. I started when I was a teenager. When my friends were playing marbles, I was reading the Bible. When my friends were looking for a girlfriend, I was writing songs. So don't get jealous of me. I use my time differently. I am a product of how I use my time. How many times you read the Bible this year? Did you ever read the Bible this year? So do you know God's word? Your life is how you use your time. Look at the next verse. He says what? Therefore, be not foolish, but understand what the will of God is. And be not what? Drunken with wine, where there is riot, and be filled with the Holy Spirit, he says. Redeeming the time, using it properly, making sure that you invest it in a way that it benefits you. The word redeem, I want to leave with you tonight. Write the word deem down. The word deem actually means to own something. To redeem something means to own it again. So when the Bible says redeem time, it means you had some time that you messed up, you lost it, you threw it away. He says, now spend the next year making up for what you lost. That might mean you may just stay a little later, cut off some friendships, shut down some clubs you were part of, change relationships with some of these organizations that ain't taking you nowhere, take an evening class to redeem me so you can't have a normal life anymore because you lost some time you got to make up for. To redeem time means you got to work a little harder. To redeem time means that you got to actually be more focused and more disciplined. To redeem time means that you may need to throw off some things that were so nice and pleasurable to do some things that are important. To redeem time means to convert time now into value. To redeem time means to fulfill or pay an outstanding debt. When I saw that in Hebrew, it's amazing. To redeem means to pay the debt that you owe. Not just to God, but to your life. If you wasted five years, you have a debt to yourself. You got to pay yourself back the time you lost. Can I put it this way? Ephesians 14 says what? That is why he said, wake up, O sleeper. Make the most of every opportunity. Ephesians 5 verse 15. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of what? Every opportunity, because the days are full of distractions. Everybody trying to get your time, and half of them don't deserve it. I was like you, you know, I want to impress people, I want to just give, I'm, I'm a lover. So I give to everybody. So I give to everybody who is poor, I give them. A guy come to me half drunk, he said, give me a dollar, I give him a dollar. A guy come to me smoking grass, he said, I need some food, I give him money. One day I read in the Bible, the Bible says, give with discretion. Do you know what that means? That means you got to assess who asking you for something, including your time. I want to see you. Why do you want to see me? And when we get together, what are we going to talk about? You'll be amazed in my position. You'll be amazed how many people want to see me. And I got to be very careful. This is serious. People will abuse your time. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story. You want to take responsibility for your life. Take full responsibility for your life. I got me here. I can get me out of this. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. George Bernard Shaw said there are two kinds of people in life. He said those that make things happen and those that don't know what happened. 
Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. Write this down. To take ownership and control of your time. That's what it means to redeem time. To convert into opportunity to fulfill your purpose. That's how you redeem time. In other words, you design your days to create value in your life. And the way you control time is by planning. You got to plan your day or your day will be planned by somebody else. Time, like all commodities, must be managed. Time must be protected. It must have a focus. It must have a purpose. It must have a vision. It must be measurable in results. I spent two hours with you. Now, can I measure how you gained and I gained? Or did we just blow the wind? What are you going to do with the next 12 months? I'm not talking about the, about the 12 months you, you had. That's gone. You got one more time God's given you. In other words, time is putting worth on your energy. Understanding and knowing that we can move from where we are, that we can begin to design the kind of life that empowers us, that gives us happiness, that enable us to be on top of who we are, knowing that as we begin to explore new horizons and new vistas in life, that as we begin to, to focus on developing ourselves, as we begin to elevate ourselves and not to follow the crowd, activating the thinker in us and disciplining the emotional part of ourselves, it's not easy, but through practice and practice and practice, practice makes what? Absolutely not. Dismantle that belief system. Practice makes improvement. You can always better your best. You can always go beyond anything that you have ever done. You never hit a state of perfection. And so all you're looking for are new breakthroughs through practice and practice. You'll get better and better. And there's still some things that will happen to you that will catch you on the blind side that you did not anticipate. Can you put this down? The 10 keys to redeeming time. This is what I want to end on. Here's how to redeem every day. Number one, document a plan. Put a plan for what you want to accomplish. Put it on paper. Number two, establish your priorities based on that plan. This is very important. Number three, pursue your passion only. Identify your passion and go after it because so many people will distract you. You better stay with your passion. Not every invitation is a blessing. Inspiring habits. Not every opportunity is a blessing. Number four, protect your plans and your priorities. Everybody say it, protect. Listen to me, I know what I'm talking about. You will be attacked by so many opportunities. You gotta protect your time and your priorities from other people's interests. Hey man, I got an idea. Yeah, but that ain't my idea. And if I go after your idea, that can take me off course of my assignment. It's not a bad idea, it just ain't my idea. You gotta protect your priorities. But number five, read. Identify your value. In other words, identify what's valuable to you. If you don't do that, you're gonna waste time. Number six, make decisions based on your destiny. If you know where you wanna go, then design your decisions accordingly because everyone wants your time. Number seven, this is an important one, inventory your associations. I want you to spend the first day of this new year just making a list of all the people you associated with, all the organizations you associate with, all the places you associate with, and see how many of them is taking you to your vision. You'll be shocked who is wasting your time. Number eight, review your investments. Question, what are you investing your time in? People spend hours watching television. Hours watching LMN. I mean, I go to visit people, everybody got LMN on. These ladies get, <gasps> and them movies, all they got is killing and stuff, you know, little robbing and little adultery here. And I'm sitting there going, you spend every day eating this stuff, consuming your time. Number nine, do not try to please everyone. If you want to redeem your time, stop trying to make everybody happy. You cannot make everybody happy. Half of the folks who smiling at you don't like you. Get over it. And the rest of them, they only putting up with you. Humans, humans will help you do nothing and then they go on and do something without you. You have to redeem your time by reviewing who you're trying to please. There's some people you're trying to please who don't like you. I like what Jesus said. He said, I live to please my father. I live to get the approval of my father. Stop trying to get everybody's approval. Everyone will not like what you do. They didn't even want to do what you do. You have to be very careful how you redeem that moment. And number 10, write it down, it's the big one. Forget the past and pursue 
and design the future. Design it. Become an architect of life. This takes a little bit of exercise to do it. You know, you got to sit down and spend time. But you have to sit down and design your year. Otherwise, you will live somebody else's year. They're going to give you their architectural drawings. Anything that happens should be in association with where you want to go in life. So part of beginning to get unstuck, you've got to decide that the behavior pattern that you have adopted doesn't work for you. You've got to change your strategies. And changing your strategy means reinventing your life. Recreating you. And you have the power to do that. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. So as you're in the process of reinventing your life, write a description of the kind of person that you want to be. What are the things that you must overcome? What qualities about your personality you know that you're going to have to change because those particular characteristics are liabilities to you? What are your assets? What are your strong points? Go for walks. Do some things for you. Just go for a stroll so you can engage in some reflective thinking on life, on yourself. Listen to upbeat music, music that inspire you. I had a program for myself. I have books that I read that inspire me, tapes that I listen to that fire me up. Because you're going to have sometimes low moments when you won't want to get out of bed. At times you won't want to come out the house. You just want to stay there. It's called life. I leave you with this word with my heart beating with great passion. You have been wasting enough time. See, a lot of us, because of our limited vision of ourselves, we begin to believe that there's no way out. It's over. Do something. Get back on track. Control your future by making a plan. Forget about what you didn't accomplish. Don't be your own depression. It's okay to look at the past. Last scripture, a verse you never saw before. John 7 verse 9. Let's read it together. Therefore, Jesus said, the right time for me has not yet come. But for you, you people, any time is right. He had a sense of time. And then he says what? The world cannot hate you, but it has hate me because I testify of what it does is evil. You go to the feast. Go ahead. He says, go, 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 go to the party. I am not yet going up to this feast because for me, the right time has not yet come. There's some things you ain't supposed to do yet. And some folks want you to go and do it now. If you know God's will and you document God's vision for your life, it'll also control how you pace your life. I knew better. I put this at your feet, young man. I would have done better. Sir, young woman, mother, father, I beg you, single woman, single man, let this be the last year you waste. The devil's greatest weapon to a disciplined woman and man is distraction. He distracts you to do things that you ain't supposed to be doing, even though they're good. Matter of fact, the enemy of doing the right is doing a good thing. Not everything is good, it's right. Let us pray.